right, hey, hello. Uh, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to the Sloppy Modeler. Very happy to have you along here as we uh, in, engage in uh, the Victory 357 Victory Hawk, a chronoplane, uh, <clears throat> for the first build log of this. We had the introduction, but uh, definitely getting started here on, on moving some of these pieces uh, and parts forward. Before we move forward, I'd like to say thank you for your, uh, your support, thank you for your subscriptions, your likes, your comments. Comments are hugely welcome, so thank you so much for those. Uh, and just the general uh, uh, well-being of the, of the hobby. Uh, definitely uh, enjoy having people come along for the ride. Uh, on the Victory 357, or the Victory Hawk, as I'm going to call it from now on, I've just released a lot of the parts from uh, the sprues. Not all of them, but uh, you know, quite a bit of them that, um, that uh, uh, needed to be cleaned up and get started. One uh, challenge with this kit uh, out of the gate that I, I, I'm going to have is the fact that this is almost exclusively butt joints for everything. There are no interlocking pins, no locator pins. Uh, it literally is uh, butted up and, and hope that your glue works. So this is going to take uh, some seam work and uh, a lot of patience on, on putting this all together. So, uh, which is fine. Uh, that's exactly what uh, modeling is all about. Just kind of give you an idea. These are the two pontoons. Uh, I guess they go kind of like that. Uh, there's the pontoons and then here's the main fuselage again. It's a pretty short kit, maybe five inches along. Uh, so some of the things I did, uh, one I've already got a hole drilled here in the bottom for my bottom uh, strobe, one here in the back for the top strobe, and then I did, uh, I'm sorry, here's the top strobe here bottom belly strobe will be over there and then there's I had to drill out the front of that for a headlight in that front nose piece uh, the rest of this is is fine it just gonna take some more cleanup additionally I went ahead and drilled in uh, in this section here you can see that there's going to be a light right there one on each side in the pontoons and I, or jet engines is probably a better phrase so I went ahead and drilled that with my little tiny drill bit and then I also just took my hobby knife and, and cleaned out that front where I'm going to put another set of lights uh, at the same time. So uh, that is uh, done on the, um, on the jet engines. Uh, this is the interior and the wings etc. So I, I have to work through that wiring chase. One of the things I wanted to do was light up these, um, these jet engines in the back of uh, these jet engines here in the back of the, the, the jets, right? So, the challenge is, is that this part is a solid part uh, here, and then you have a cone piece which is um, right there that slots into it, so there's no real light that's going to escape from it. So, uh, what I'm going to do is take my super, super tiny drill bit and put my glasses on. And uh, this is the smallest bit that I have. I'm not sure what size it is, but it is very small. And what I'm going to do is drill, um, you know, approximately eight holes here. To let light through. Four.
All right, I think that that has got enough to it that I will have some light that's going to come through uh, from the red. So I'm just going to do these here on this side very quickly. Yeah, excellent. So, hey, I'm real happy with that. Uh, I probably have to do the same thing on this one here. Uh, I've got, uh, this is a three part that slips over the top of that. And uh, I'm going to use a bigger drill bit to show more red light through that. So, um, basically, I'm not sure if you can see that, but we've drilled through those. And that allows some light to come through, even with that center cone in there. So, uh, otherwise, there's no way to glue that center cone, <coughs> center cone in uh, over the long run. So, um, we'll see if that lets enough light through that. We're going to put a LED directly at it and hope for the best right there. Other than that, uh, the, the wiring chases are going to be very straightforward. Now that I've got that drilled, really the next, uh, the next step is to go into light blocking uh, the uh, kit. Uh, you can see there's my hole on the side for uh, my uh, navigation beacon hole in the top and then we can just put a jet. So essentially I'm going to work on this piece here. What I'll do is I'll mount a LED a white one going forward there and it gets covered by a lens. I'll mount a, uh, this is going to be the green, I'm going to mount a green LED in there and cover it with its glass and then I'll mount a red LED here pointing that direction uh, so that that is um, pointing that direction so that it uh, uh, has red light coming out. So I'll do that on both of those and I, th I think the way to do this is to build all of this up glue this to uh, this part here and again I'm, I'm working with this alignment stuff is very is, is going to be just really challenging so like I said not really a whole lot of stuff to glue to uh, there is a locator pin there it looks like so I think this the key is is to glue on one of these pieces here in its appropriate or, or its location think that that fits something like that right there so you're gonna have that uh, that that loop there and then it'll fill in so that's gonna be some seam work but I can glue to that and then uh, glue to to this right here and actually that's a perfect place to uh, run the wiring chase through so I can run it right up through here it's gonna need um, it's going to need uh, four wires going to come through here. So two, four, uh, <clears throat> four wires, uh, each of the hots front and back for the red and white. And then the uh, hot for the, uh, which I'll combine into one. But then uh, one here for the green. So uh, two, two, two negatives coming through and then one of the, the, the or two of the, of the greens coming through so uh, <clears throat> let me go to work on this the next step is to light block all of this and then I can start wiring stuff in and getting it placed in place and then we'll come back and, and try to glue it up so for right now this is the uh, uh, <clears throat> chronoplane <clears throat> excuse me the chronoplane Victory Hawk 357 so I will be back with you after we've done the light blocking on this thanks all right, hey, progressing on with the uh, Victory Hawk 357. Uh, we've just done some uh, rudimentary cleanup, 
and initial gluing together of some of the parts. Uh, just to give you an idea of what's next. We are uh, about ready to go into light blocking here, but before I do that, I think, I think, I think, I think I'm gonna glue in uh, these pieces here and light block it that way. Because this is gonna take, with these butt joints, this is gonna take uh, some definitely, it's gonna take some challenge to get all this put together correctly. And therefore, I think what I wanna do is have this stuff glued up uh, before I primer all that so it's easier to glue. I can glue plastic to plastic that way. But uh, all this has been trimmed up, cleaned up, uh, washed in uh, Dawn dishwashing soap and uh, we've got the seats put together as you can see the seats are together really easy rudimentary the rudder pedals and the stick yokes are together I didn't put the uh, steering wheels on yet just because that's not quite time for that this is a, a pretty nice part this is your center console and it does get photo etched but that needs to be painted and primed before I uh, glue some of that stuff on and then here's the two tables that are going to go on top of, of that piece in the interior. So the interior is going to be a bit of a challenge, but I think we can pull it together. And uh, the rest of the stuff is ready to light block. And I'll do two coats of black primer, and then one coat of black pr uh, white primer on the interior of this too to make it pull together. But I'm going to do some thought on putting in uh, at least uh, a couple of these pieces before we get all the way to... Um, to light blocking that just so that it glues up a little nicer so let me see about that and then I'll be back with you thanks all right hello and uh, welcome back to the sloppy modeler and uh, welcome to the uh, US or uh, I'm sorry the uh, Victory Hawk from AMP uh, the Acrono plane uh, this is build number one and uh, if you uh, enjoy what you see during this video I would appreciate it if you could hit that like button that's always greatly appreciated uh, if you want to share or subscribe, please do so. We're growing, and I'm excited about that. And uh, very uh, pleased with uh, the quick progress on the um, on the Acrona plane here. Let's talk a little bit about what we've done and uh, and what the next steps are. So, primarily, uh, I've gone through and and prepped all the parts with sanding and so forth, uh, getting all the little nubs, and there were quite a few of them on this model as you clip it off of the sprues. Uh, and then I went and put ahead and put two black coats of, of uh, Styrolene's primer. I'm not sure how you pronounce that. And on the interior of anything that's going to have a light in it. And then a coat of white primer went inside of it. After that, I brought it back out here to the table. And uh, using my hobby knife, the back of it just essentially scraped off the paint where there are going to be any joins uh, at this stage. Uh, so uh, I've got all that done. Um, and then this was just kind of a first mock-up of, of how that wiring is going to go through there. And I think that is going to be very cool. Uh, the next step is before I wire this is to start sanding some of this, uh, uh, some of these joints here. Uh, again, they're butt joints, so you're going to have to sand on them a little bit uh, just to get them to, to come together uh, as nicely as you want to. But uh, still, I think that's going to look good. There is enough space for wiring. I'm going to do... Um, uh, uh, wiring through here. Uh, essentially what uh, I'm excited about is, is putting all this together with uh, a flasher strobe and then a um, uh, flasher for the uh, side which is going to go right into there and then a headlight which goes here and then a jet engine coming out the back so it's going to have a white bulb uh, red and green and then a, a red bulb here back for the jet uh, exhaust jet engine so hopefully that will, will turn out all right went ahead and primed uh, some of the other parts so those have had their first priming and then I also went into the paint booth and painted up the interior uh, with uh, this model master and this is pale green um, model master acrylic paint but I did try something new this time out and uh, essentially I used uh, Mr. Color Leveling Thinner uh, in the interior paint just to see what that would look like and I'm actually fairly pleased uh, those turned out really nice the seats turned out uh, uh, just uh, fantastic um, 
I'm very, very excited about how this is going to look. So the, the seats have been done. Here's the uh, joysticks and the rudders. Uh, and I'll have to do some detail painting with that. But that was uh, uh, just kind of a new experiment. So I'm, I'm, I'm anxious to see what this Mr. Leveling, Mr. Color Leveling Thinner will do with the silver paint that's going to go on here. So we'll, we'll have to see how that, that comes together. So now the next step is I want to I want to do the interior of this. And so what I've got is this is a uh, one inch yep one inch piece of Cobb chip on board lighting it's, it's five volt uh, you only have to hook up uh, ground and, um, and, a, and a positive to it and you can do that right here from your leads if I uh, quickly put this in there and there that's your lighting and I think that's going to be more than sufficient lighting in there to light up the interior for what you're going to see, which is going to be six windows, three on each side, and the front window. And I'm going to uh, endeavor to just mount that light on the floor right there. I don't know if you can see that, but we'll, 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 we'll stick it there. I'm going to put two wires on it, two leads, and those are going to come out of my chases up here. Uh, now that I think about it, I probably should have, could have just ran them right there. I might just redo that real quickly and, and, and not run those up the wall, but we'll see. And then um, once that lighting is in, I can then go ahead and uh, put in the, the chairs, the yokes, the center stack, uh, uh, cockpit and then there are two tables that go on top of here they've been painted that interior green that go on top and go against there so that is the next step I'm actually I am gonna drill two little holes here so I can just come straight out I don't have to worry about the wires coming around I think that's enough lighting in in that um, which is which is very cool and then once I have that done um, then I can wire in my headlight again the same thing I come in from the front here with a small SMD, uh, pure white, come down here, and then my wiring will be all in this area. Uh, the reason for that is once I have um, one set of wires for the interior lights, one set of wires for the headlight, and then these are a belly strobe and a tail strobe that are going to go here and here. Uh, I can run that wire again. You can run that wire coming in from the front and put it all in this area and uh, then also that's the other step is that that'll be able to bring that wiring up connect you know your your wires here for the the nav lights and the the, the just standard lights once that's all connected then I can actually just drill a hole right through the bottom of this and send that directly down to the base so that is the long-term plan there is some good news. I was so concerned about these butt joints. However, the way that that cockpit fits in there, uh, that's actually going to be fairly tight and now fairly easy to to connect all of this up without significant, uh, significantly terrible gaps that I can see so far. I will have some and I'll have to fill them and, and sand them back, but I'm, I'm more encouraged about how this is starting to uh, starting to come together and look. Um, you know, specifically, I was really worried about the front, but I can I can close those up with clamps, so that's going to be okay. And uh, so, um, yeah, we're making some progress. So the next step, just because I, I need to do the interior, wire this into uh, the the back, get it taped down or glued down run my wiring out to it and uh, then I can go ahead and work on the interior. Also on the interior, uh, because of the way that this works, I, uh, this is actually going to be pretty cool, I hope. The next step I'm going to do on the interior is I'm going to glue, uh, I'm going to use the decal and put it onto uh, this cockpit here. Then I'm going to take, uh, then I'm going to take the photo etch right here and glue that over my dials and I'm gonna 
Uh, I think I'm going to leave this copper. I, I think that's cool enough. I'm going to leave all that copper and uh, I, I'm, I, I think that's going to be neat. You won't ever see it. However, I think it's just neat and it's an exercise in photo etch and exercise in a little work. So um, let me go ahead and continue on with this. Uh, the other thing I need to do is I actually need to pull this uh, front windshield here because it goes in um, it goes in uh, from the back you can't take it in from the front so it goes in from the back and take that front windshield and coat it in future so that it has time to dry and, and be done and then there are two tiny little photo etch pieces that represent the windshield wipers on this and um, in all honesty I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that because uh, they're so tiny, so delicate, and I don't think I can get that in place without the glue causing me multiple, multiple problems. Unless I use canopy glue, glue it down, then dip it in future, and then bring it back. That might be the way to do that. So uh, let me go to work on that piece of it, and we'll see. But for now, I've got to do a little bit of soldering, and then uh, when we come back, we will have uh, some more pieces of this completed. Thanks, and we'll see you in a minute. All right, hey, continuing on with the uh, Victory Hawk 357, the Acronoplane. Uh, have made good progress here. I uh, had to step away to do quite a bit of work, but uh, let's talk about uh, what we've got. Just did a little detail painting on the uh, rudder pedals and the yoke. I have to attach the, um, I have to attach the uh, handles to that, steering handles to that. Uh, but we'll do that next, and then we'll paint those up a little bit. It looks like we've got it here in gray. I'll glue those on and then uh, hand paint those those details. So those are uh, are good. I uh, wanted to show you real quick the interior of the Acronoplane with uh, just one little set of cob lighting in there. And I think I'm going to be uh, just fine with the with the result. So uh, that white in there, that white um, paint, it's just white primer, really bounces that light around quite nicely. Uh, we're going to have a nice white, uh, uh, not, nice clear white. This is daylight in here on the, the color of the light. Uh, it's not warm, it's not cold, it's just, uh, just really, uh, it's going to look nice. So that's the interior. I've got a, uh, a uh, SMD a large one like an 0825 or 0805 uh, SMD in the front uh, windshield I don't know if I can fire that one up or not but let's let's maybe give that a shot just kind of show you some of this lighting that's uh, in place And that is it. And that's uh, got a uh, 300 ohm resistor on. I didn't want it just over blindingly super bright. It would be out of scale. So I went with a little bit larger light uh, ohm on that and then I can put the lens over that. That'll look uh, really nice I think in there. Uh, I'm going to fill that with um, micro crystal clear before I put the lens on but after I seal the, the hull up. So that looks really good. The lighting left to go in in the in the main fuselage. Uh, I have uh, one to put in here uh, that's going to be a, a top anti-collision light and a belly anti-collision light here in the back, and uh, those will be a triple flash. And I have to put the red light in here for the jet exhaust, and I'll use a larger SMD for that red SMD for that. Uh, so I'm going to put that one in, and I can do that pretty easily. But I'm not going to put these two in until I close up the hull, because I've got enough room to feed wire in and down, uh, wire it, put it back up, and then put it away. Because I want support on that. I want support on that light when it goes in, and I can't do that with just one side. So uh, that's kind of the goal uh, as we go ahead. 
Okay, so we have got uh, our work cut out for us. We've got to put one more light in the back of that, and then actually, I'm still working on the interior. I've got the parts painted up, and those go in next. Then I went ahead and completed, I haven't glued these together yet, but I'm ready to actually. These are the, the jet engine pontoon lights. And essentially what we've done there is we've put a white headlight in the front and we've put a, um, I don't know, let's work on this just for a second here. So we've put a white headlight in the front and a red light for the jet engine and I'm not sure if I've got one that's real handy yet right there uh, when that goes on uh, after we get it all sealed up uh, that is gonna look great in there um, so that's the jet engine uh, from the back once I get it sealed up that uh, I'm gonna be really really pleased with that I think then careful uh, I went ahead and put in the, the port side red and uh, navigation light and that's going to be a blinking light but that's uh, pretty bright I love it and uh, that is going to look good and then here is the front headlight is in and uh, that is ready to um, put a, a lens over the top of that and there's a clear lens for it in the kit so the next thing would be to, to seal this up and then start sanding on all these spots here for the, um, the seam. That's going to be a doozy, I think. It's going to be a real doozy, but we'll get it sanded up. And then that will be ready to insert into this piece here, as I said. So that is uh, the port side pontoon. And then the starboard side pontoon, same thing, it is ready to go. And uh, this one is covered by tape, but uh, you can see that's a really bright green there. Uh, we've got same thing, really nice red uh, jet engine exhaust in the back, and a really super sweet uh, light in the front. So um, there's the front, there's our light on the side, and our, our red exhaust in the back. So lighting this uh, model has not been super tremendously uh, complicated or challenging. Uh, it is a little bit of a challenge to get three uh, resistors in here uh, and then that's just temporary as far as putting those together because the, the nav light is going to be a blinking light that's on a separate circuit coming in and uh, once I center those in those will be uh, put together with with two sets of wires so we, we do have some work to get there and I think I can have all of this uh, glued in and wired uh, prior to, um, I think it goes this way, yeah, it's green on that side. I think I can have all this, um, just like that finally, yeah, I can have all of this glued in and, and, and wired. Uh, there we go. That's how that's going to look. If we can get it there. Uh, and have all this in one piece and ready to ready to paint so that's kind of the next goal after I get that light in the back of the um, here and in the interior in is to glue this piece up as a sub assembly and once that's done uh, and then this will be a sub sub assembly the big key is put the two and then load do all the act, uh, accoutrement that goes in it but very pleased with uh, the lighting how it turned out so far and we'll keep going on this Gonna work on the interior next, and then um, when we come back, we'll uh, we'll see where we're at. So thank you, and we'll see you in a minute. All right, back with you here real quickly on the uh, rear lighting of this. So uh, what I like doing for some of these things is it's real easy to take uh, modeler's clay, which this is um, Sculpey uh, modeler's clay. Uh, it's oven baked clay it's got a huge amount of clay in there but I keep it I keep one in just a little baggie like that keep it fresh and pliable and then I'll seal that up in a minute but what I like to do is and actually I'll come back to that just to show you so these SMDs uh, typically they're bent 
or twisted to one side and there is definitely a forward motion on that I don't know if that's picking that up or not but um, you have to be careful of how you you insert that into your model so that it shines the right way and what I find is that this uh, this glue or I'm sorry that this um, what I've found is that this uh, modeler's clay works wonders for that. I've showed this before but uh, this is just a little larger piece and just cut off another little section and um, put it in this section here like so. I need just a touch more. Just uh, go back to first grade arts and crafts and lay your clay in like so and then you can simply close this over the top squeeze that together I actually don't have enough clay in there yet Maybe just some more should do it should get us there no problem now and then close that up so now we've got uh, now we've got that SMD sandwiched in the clay and I've yet to have one of these even move on me any way shape or form so um, that's all right so now we will take and Connect our power up to the one we just connected. And uh, we have an amazing light that's there. And I believe that this piece here goes in like this. Yes, and then this fits over the top of that. And I have a jet engine light right there. And that is going to look awesome. Just like that. Uh, and then that cone will go in yet. So that is what my rear light looks like on there. And uh, currently I can connect all of the wires that are now coming in and out of this thing. And um, that'll be one circuit and then the other circuit will be for the triple flashing anti-collision lights so um, it's just uh, that's what I do to install a light into a space like that that's not glued up together but what I'm going to do next is I'll combine all of these wires into one uh, connection for positive one connection for negative We'll wire them all up and that'll give me one wire coming out of the bottom here that will be the main cabin lighting. So um, so let me do that and then uh, uh, again back to the interior now that I've got that light in. So that is as simple as I can do it. Oh, oh. Didn't want to do it that direction but let's go back to it. Set that back in like so. And if you've got a little bit of challenge, just take some clay and you're set in, just like that. And that should be a nice bright light. Alright, so let me combine all this wiring here, and then uh, when we're done, we will have uh, one wire coming out of the base of this that'll light up the whole uh, ship, except for the blinking anti-collision lights. So I'll be back with you. Thanks. All right, making progress on the uh, Victory Hawk uh, 357. Actually, I'm very pleased with uh, the progress so far. And uh, and quite honestly, one of my fears was somewhat delayed, delayed on um, working with uh, the butt joints on all of this. It's gone together remarkably well, is what I'll say at the moment. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, one of the things I found out through some of your comments is, is that the windows won't fit on the exterior. 
So that's going to be a challenge, but I think those are small enough I can use Micro Crystal Clear on that. The other challenge is the window in front. And um, essentially what I've done uh, to get this to fit is I have taken my um, taken my file, my diamond file, and filed this area right here down a little further. I don't want to go any f much further, although I have to go about a uh, 32nd of an inch yet to get it to actually fit. But I'm pretty close. I just have the, the rim yet to go, and uh, I think I can make that happen. So that's the, and then I'm going to have to fill in the front there with a little bit of putty. Um, uh, but uh, that's that's just an interesting fit so thank you for uh, one of my comments on that and you know who you are so very much appreciated the uh, rest of the interior went together fantastically and I, I don't think you can see it but that's the nature of interiors but let's go ahead and light it up maybe show you what the lights look like And uh, so inside there, yeah, you can see it. I, uh, good, I'm, I'm kind of pleased with it. So uh, inside of that, uh, there is, uh, I don't know if you can catch that or not, but I was able to get the uh, photo etch onto the interior. The seats are in. Got my yokes painted up. Uh, got my green... Um, I got my green uh, lights in there, or green tables in there. And every just thing seems to work pretty good. So that went together really nice. Then glued all this up. I still have a hole here on top uh, and a hole on the bottom for my my anti-collision strobes. Uh, you can see that this turned out uh, really nice. That's going to glow amazingly nice when uh, it comes time to put that that back piece on and the cone on. And the front is is looking really good. I've got that uh, glued up nicely. So I've sanded some of the seam. The next step uh, for this piece is to put uh, 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 first coat of primer down, see what that looks like in here. I need to stuff uh, or tape off these, uh, these areas here, but that's okay. Um, and tape off this before I put primer on it, but put primer on it and we're off and running. I still have room in here to wire those two sets of wires that are gonna come through and I'm going to do that after I get uh, the first coat of primer on this so I can sand around those areas and not have to worry about those two external lights. Uh, but that is, uh, that is the main fuselage. And you know what? I, I, I'm excited. It's coming along really nice. Uh, even the test fits on some of the stuff look really good. And uh, once that's kind of in place, then, then that's uh, the next step. Actually, I should put that in before we go too much further now that I see that. Just go ahead and do that that front end and do the grill uh, because that's going to take a little bit of sanding and putty work there. I see it's not just going to fit real super perfect. So that's just talking to myself. So yeah, that's the lights for the... Um, and just one light in there uh, has lit up that whole interior just really quite nicely. And uh, that that's going to look really, really fantastic. So that is the uh, the main fuselage, uh, and then let's uh, plug in the other lights for the um, for the pontoons. So this is for, uh, as I said, we're going to have three circuits on here: one for the flashers on the anti-collision, one for the flashers on the nav, and one for the main lights. So right now. Um, this actually went together pretty darn well too, I, I have to say. Uh, I did put some putty in here, and I put putty in there, and I'm ready to, to primer that. Putty along there needs a little more work, same thing with that side. Uh, but uh, there are my uh, red and green uh, nav lights, and they're going to blink. So I've got that on a, an individual circuit, uh, which turns it out looks pretty good. So, uh, pleased with that. And then finally, let's go to 
the other circuit. Let me peel this back. Just kind of tape these down temporarily so that they wouldn't be in the way. But uh, I gotta let some dry, glue dry there anyways. Okay, so. that out of the way and now we can do lights on this. Sorry for the fumbles folks. And there's our red rockets, or I'm sorry, our red jet exhaust and there are our headlights in the front and uh you know so for the most part i'm very excited about that that looks just great and uh this is kind of ready to go to its first coat of primer i got a little more patching to do before i send that in one thing i've already done is this is going to be on a very short uh very short base here so what i'm uh this piece fits in really quite nicely just like that but uh, to make sure that that's got extra support, what I'm going to do next is glue a piece of wood down to this or something that's quite substantial. I'm not sure what yet. i got to go searching through my stash to figure that out. And um, glue a piece of wood to that and then um, do just a regular mount so that that has a, more support than just on that plastic on, on metal. I think it would hold this as light enough, but I don't want to take that chance. Uh, and then when this is ready, that can go right into the base that I'm planning for later. But uh, that uh, is going to go really nice as well. So, um, yeah, very excited about the, the progress here. And this turned out really quite good. The fit here is going to, like I said, it's going to take some primer and some sanding, but what model doesn't? Uh, but regardless from that, uh, I, I, I think this is going to go, to, and it goes really well into here. Uh, on the, the first test fit, so that is going to look uh, pretty sharp. And my pylons uh, are they're cantilevered at an appropriate angle, um, so that's cool. And then these have glue that's filling them in, just clear glue. Same thing up front, have clear glue that's already filled in, ready for the um, ready for the lenses to go over the top of those and the jet exhaust to go over the back of those. So that is going to be work, but uh, we need to get some primer on this, I need to get my mount finished and then get primer put on this and then um, uh, once the primer's on this we'll sand it up and see what it looks like uh, overall. Uh, but there are some, there are some challenges, we're, we've got some fit issues and some fitment issues, but other than that we're looking good. So stay with me, we'll be back with more progress on the Victory Hawk 357. Okay, progress with the uh, chronoplane, the uh, Victory Hawk 357. Uh, I've just completed adding um, micro crystal clear to the six windows, and I've got paper towel in the front window. I'm going to let this dry overnight, and the, really the only purpose for that is just to mask the interior from getting uh, too much. Uh, too much um, getting paint into the interior that uh, we've got a set of primer to go next and then we'll we'll look at uh, gaps and so forth and body work that needs to be done but I reckoned that uh, if I fill this with micro crystal clear that will will trim out of there and pop out of there very easily as a as a liquid mask at least I hope so I feel confident that it will and so uh, basically after this dries, I'll spray all of this with its first coat of primer. I went ahead and used my uh, Mr. Surfacer 1000 from Mr. Hobby and filled in a bunch of uh, little gaps and seams already. And then we'll see after the first coat of primer what that looks like. So that is uh, uh, good progress on the main fuselage. I did get the front glued in. I'm very happy with that look throughout and uh, uh, I think that uh, I'm pretty pleased with this. Like I said, I've got first uh, sandings done on that seam. So we're gonna let that one sit for a time and see what happens with that. On the, um, the lower portion, the pontoons and the lower fuselage, 
I've got the first coat sanded here uh, uh, with um, also sanded with my Mr. Hobby, Mr. Surfacer 1000. Also glued in uh, this little wood here and uh, that uh, turned out really nice. That's going to fit in there just uh, fantastically into the base. And then uh, I've got my first sanding done on the Mr. Hobby and uh, next is to go back in and uh, add um, next is to go in and, and do another coat of primer on this. So that's the next step and uh, when I come back uh, we'll have a full coat of primer on this and probably a photo coat of primer on that because we're going to go ahead and get that done. So I will be back with you after a bit. Thanks. All right, making uh, progress on the uh, Victory Hawk, the chronoplane. I just want to bring you up to speed on what we've accomplished so far. So um, I I'm pretty pleased with the primer coat that has and how it has turned out. Uh, very, very pleased with um, with how this I think is going to look. Um, so. Let's talk about uh, some of the things that were a bit of a challenge. So installing this lower portion here uh, was was um, was just an exercise in patience. I think was probably the best phrase to use for that. Uh, I used a, uh, a five-minute epoxy to go into that, and for the most part, I think I am pleased with the way it turns out. I've got a little bit of a slight hump here where that that came together but I'm gonna leave that as kind of a panel line and I'm gonna scribe all the way around the front cowling because that is a panel line and I've made it disappear in a couple of places so we'll 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 do the cowling uh, next we'll scribe that in the the accoutrement uh, here is a little hatch that that will go like right there and I want to paint that uh, just a slightly different color. So I, I've got uh, uh, some some different si silvers that I'm going to use. I got to do some sanding on this. The next step is to to take my 600 grit, or actually this is 1,000 grit. Uh, yeah, 1,000 grit sandpaper, and go over this primer one more time to really give me that uh, that look that I, I I want as far as a smooth silver finish. So I'm going to go over this one more time with that. And then the next set of steps. So the color of this, the color of, of the ladder uh, are going to be a, a different color. Also, there are four parts which are right here. Uh, these four parts right there. One, two, three, four. Those go um, in these notches there's one here there's one there there's a notch here and a notch there and I assume that that would be buckles for the buckles for the, the cowling to, to lock it down right like a Jeep uh, current Jeeps have uh, a lot of antique cars have those buckles to, to put that down so I think that is um, I think that is is just fine uh, I'm gonna paint those a, uh, a copper color kind of the same copper I used on the inside just because I think that would look uh, really sharp. I did manage to get my uh, anti-collision lights on the top and bottom. Uh, those have uh, really turned out um, really nice. I'm, I'm very pleased. I got to re-tape those. I've been reusing Lou's mask from my Franklin uh, uh, NX326 series, especially these little bubbles right here. There's a whole bunch of useful stuff on here um, that I've just been repurposing for. Uh, for uh, this upper and lower, for the fronts here, for the backs, for the back of that, and, and for the most part I'm really, really liking what we've come up with. So uh, I'm going to do a little scribing, a little sanding, and then, um, and then I'm going to paint these two uh, panels here. I think you can see them. Those two panels need to be uh, painted. And uh, I'm going to use a like a steel color. I think I've got a, a, a batch of, of steel in my old, old timey paints. And I'm going to paint that, yep, right here. So this is um, steel. And it is, I don't even think this is an uh, acrylic. I think it is an uh, enamel. 
Uh, I'll have to check. Non-toxic. Oh, it's acrylic. Good. So a water wash up. So that is a steel color, and that is different from the hull color that I've chosen. So you can see here in the illustration that, that they've got this hatch mark. So I'm just going to paint those with steel. Also, I'm going to paint the lower portion of that uh, a, a, a steel color. And uh, the rest I'm not going to mess with, I don't think. I'm not going to try and do um, the bottom. So what I'm going to do is, is we'll paint this here and back and then tape all that off. Uh, just to give that a different a different look and same thing here we'll tape both of those off and I might even tape off these um, two ports now what I did is I took a, a, a three hole punch and took a very very thin piece of styrene here and and punched out two of those holes and then glued those to on top there were some pieces in here but uh, that's my fuel filler for the tanks here uh, that's what I wanted to use for that that tank and I think that looks good but um, I just glued that in but I might paint those that steel color as well so uh, once that's taped off those once I've got that painted and I'm going to do that over this this primer here and then paint this section here then I'm going to tape all that off and use um, gloss black for base for chrome from Mission Models. And uh, that's about empty. This has got some in it. So I've got enough to do this, no problem. And I'm going to give this uh, a clear, I'm sorry, a black coat. Uh, I'm going to give this a black coat over the rest of this to make uh, um, the silver really pop when I, when I glue the silver in. Um, so that's exciting, and I think that's going to look really, really sharp. I got some more sanding here. I'm doing. I'm just looking at this for the first time since I came out of paint or out of primer. And for the most part, that Styrolene's primer really works nice, and I think that the use, using the Mission Models black will will bring up even some more detail. So that is is where uh, that stands at the moment. So I'm um, really pleased with the way the front has turned out. I uh, glued up really nice. I've got uh, um, just just a lot of a lot of uh, uh, confidence in the way that this is turning out. So uh, I'm going to go back to work on this. Next thing is sanding on the primer for a little bit, and then once the sanding on the primer is done, uh, we will go to uh, to paint. So I'll be back with you shortly. Thank you. All right, hey, uh, making progress here on the uh, Victory Hawk 357. Um, we are out of the black, uh, or out of the paint booth with our black coat of uh, Mission Models. And uh, what I've got here is a, a thousand grit sandpaper, and I am going back over any little high spots that uh, may have been left. And fortunately, there's not too many, but I'm just trying to take uh, the, any of the, the little dimples off uh, that, um, might show up here or any rough spots and this feels pretty smooth to my finger and I think that's um, you know one of the keys here now I didn't get enough uh, I did not get enough gloss here on on this lower portion but that's all right and uh, um, I think for the most part this is going to look really nice I'm about ready to go in and paint uh, 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 the silver that I've chosen and uh, which is basically pure platinum from Martha Stewart's and uh, as I mentioned, I'm using the uh, Mr. Hobby leveling thinner in that, along with a little bit of um, retarder, uh, paint retarder, which basically slows down how fast that's going to dry. And the reason I want to slow that down is because I want that paint to go on wet. Like Unlike regular airbrushing, I want this one to go on wet, which will give me a nice leveling, hopefully give me a nice leveling process uh, to make that just uh, flatten out and smooth out and uh, painters call it smooth or flow. But um, uh, for the most part I really think we've got a nice finish going here uh, especially once we get the silver on, a couple coats of silver on here uh, which I'm going to do two coats and then um, once the silver's on, then we'll do a coat of uh, Tester's Lacquer Clear. 
and after that lacquer clear is on, then I can go back and do one final coat, or one, uh, do all the rebleys that need to go onto this. The other thing I'm gonna do is on the uh, jet exhaust, uh, this is all gonna be silver, I'm gonna go with a, um, uh, a, a much darker silver, uh, even towards uh, metallic um, gray, I think might be the right choice there. Go to metallic gray, uh, which is what uh, this is right here. And that's going to be a lot darker than the other silver. So I'm going to go to this metallic gray, I think, and uh, do some highlights. And uh, so we will have the steel color, which here's the steel for the ladder. Um, then we'll do metallic gray on the jet exhaust. Uh, and then I'm going to do almost uh, probably a gunmetal or a, um, I have a color changing black that I might do on the, the, the jet exhaust cones and a couple other pieces. What I've also done is I've painted the outside of this uh, upright in steel and the lower side in steel. And so now we're going to paint the upper top in our silver, uh, the inward side on the silver. And then um, that should really give us a nice look for, uh, for the wings, uh, or the, I'm sorry, the elevator and uh, the rudder. Uh, so both of those are ready to go into the paint booth. So we've got more paint work to do. I'm ready to go in and spray this. I want to get a couple coats onto this um, today, hopefully, and uh, we will uh, see where we end up. So I'll be back with you in a bit. All right, so that is uh, gonna wrap up uh, this uh, build log number one, getting a bit long in the tooth and uh, we are uh, making great progress. Uh, next would be the silver color. But uh, again, I really wanna thank all of my subscribers and people that comment and share and like the video. It uh, really helps to improve uh, the algorithms and to uh, definitely help with, with the growth of the channel. So until we get to the next uh, build, uh, this is it for the uh, Victory Hawk uh, 357 chronoplane from uh, AMP models out of the Ukraine. So I want to just thank everybody and we'll talk to you soon. Thank you.